good day and welcome to my workshop here today it's just a video it's not a workshop video well it is a workshop video but i'm not showing you how things are, are being done i'm showing you what has happened to our two plus two project and what has happened in between so it's about a year now we're working on it and the shell you have seen the body shell has been done and uh, the shell has been now dropped at the at the paint shop and is being painted i have been there helping and now it's the final layer on the outside is drying and we need to, to spray another few things so i'm expecting the shell back but the um, important is that in the meantime we had to prepare a few things to be able to start the reassembly straight away and that is what i'm going to talk ab about today and um, so the reason for this video is now i wanted to show you that um, while the car is at the paint shop it is it is it is important that you continue your work that when the body comes back from the paint shop that you have the items ready for assembly so that's crucial because otherwise it will hold you off you will always have some small bits and pieces you're waiting for but you need to have the big the major things ready to go on the shell and uh, that is what i'm talking about i want to inspire you to keep your projects running or those who have the cars running on this on on the road for the last year and you find some issues you i want you i want to encourage you to fix them it is winter time now and i want you to be ready in next next spring that you can start and not finding yourself with a non-running car that would be a disaster it is it is now now is the time to get things sorted before i go into the details uh, about 10 items i'm 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 showing you which are which are which have been done in the meantime while the body has been at the paint shop but before I start I want to thank a few of the people out there and um, and one of those is you see the drawing behind me some people ask me where I got that from and what that is that actually is a huge drawing and I'll show you I show you the dimensions so this 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 drawing is a 30 inch or 80 centimeters by so that is 1 meter 12 is 44 inch wide so this really is a drawing when you come closer here this one I didn't buy and um, it is from a guy called Bud Marson you might know Bud Marson he has written a book about key fobs and that is how we got to know each other so Bud Marston is a very nice guy very pleasant and um, so we had this contact about the key fobs and also later with some tools and and suddenly i got this in my mail so that was a big surprise i don't know if you if you can buy this or where he got that from i don't know but but it was too kind for you of you sending me this bit and you see it is now here on my wall and i'm very proud and it is actually very very helpful because what you see here when you come closer this is an original drawing and here is a chart actually it's not only nice to look at or a rare memorable it is also very very useful and what you see here so here they talk about the issue boot capacity from uh, 62 and uh, what i what i really use this chart for is for instance you see here or let's see here the bumper the bumper height is, is that that tells me where the bumper if the car is low or high you see so is that the g here is very interesting because that's the clearance from the silencer and it is all the dimensions are given in the world so the g is ground clearance is five and a half inch so that is what the car should be clear from the ground the bumper height at the front and that is it is 16.3 quarter of an inch so that and the other dimensions obviously as well is very very useful and um, and you see here the rear the rear bumper height is uh, AA the rear bumper height is 21 point 21 and a half inch so that is really really useful the other the other people or enthusiasts Jaguar drivers or owners or I wanted to thank is um, is one guy called Edward Hutch he is from Long Island near New York and he has been watching my videos and we got into contact and and while we were talking 
we, we, we picked up the topic, the, um, the shiny clips. And then it came into my mind that I was short of two shiny clips, those going on the, um, on the cooling houses. And I asked him if he would be able or would have a chance to find these clips. And he said, yeah, I will have a look at it. And if I, if I find any, I will let you know. And, and Ed, Ed Hutch is his name, and he said then, uh, yeah, can I have an address to post them to? And, uh, and then I said, what happened? Yeah, I found a few clips that might be useful to you. And he has posted me a pair of these shinny clips, which are so useful for my early car. So uh, well, that is a big, big thank you to you and, and your support. And uh, thank you for watching. And uh, we might get the chance to see somewhere. Maybe, maybe your area, you said is a beautiful area. I would love to come around and have a look also at your other items you have. The other person I wanted to thank is uh, is a supplier is a good I'm it's a supplier I'm using since years uh, at least since 10 years and uh, now he has helped me out with one item I was looking for and that is this um, this cover plate you you remember I was looking for this more than a year and that is one of the parts um, which were missing on my 2 plus 2 project and uh, and now I got it, and I'm so thankful that this guy at uh, Auto Classics, RW, I don't know why it's RW, I think he's called Matt, Matt Whitmire, and he, I think he must have a huge stock of old original parts. And um, so I asked him, as I was buying some other bits, if he would have these, the, this plate. So this is a special plate I was desperately after, and he said, yeah, well, I might have that. I said. Yeah, Mr. Whitmire, you should have it because you have sold plenty of uh, 2 plus 2 parts, original parts. They must be of an, of an old wrecked car. And he said, yeah, I might have it, but uh, understand, it will take me hours or days to find it. And then he asked how, how much I would be willing to, to, spend, to, to pay for it. And, well, the thing is a part of the item. The other thing is, how much time does it take to find that? I know searching certain parts in yourself, sometimes, you know, you misplace something, you know that, and how much time you waste or you spend just to find that item back where you can't remember you have placed it. And, and this item, so, so we, we, we agreed on the price, I paid for it, and I'm so happy. So I wanted to mention, if you ever need, need a part you can't find, or it's an original bit, you might, you might contact this Auto Classics Ma Matt Whitmire, and he is located in, uh, so that's a packing slip here, he is located in Snohomish, WA98290. And um, Matt, thank you for your help again and your time, and I very much appreciate that. And um, the other person I wanted to send my, um, my big thank is uh, to a guy called Michael Frank. And he, Michael, is the guy from Cool Cat. He just sent me a new motor for his uh, heater, heater fan, blower motor. And um, I'm using the Cool Cat on all the cars I'm driving. So in here you see the Cool Cat fan in action. And I'm very pleased with these. Apart from one I had recently installed on our 61 Roadster and it was working fine but then occasionally this one was running on low ref so maybe only a quarter and then we had the overheating problem I said how could that be I love these cooling fans and um, well we had this occasionally we had this uh, overheating and then I was looking at it and I could see I could see the fan rotating in a very low ref speed and I said what could that be and then I, I asked uh, Michael and uh, he said well might be I might have tightened the clip too too strong that there is a there's a contact somewhere in between or something is not working and he he offered to send me a new one I can replace it and I will do that so thank you Michael for your help and support didn't expect that so it's much appreciated and now we're going to have a look at the parts I have been doing in between and uh, it is a reminder what you have to do in the meantime to not delay your reassembly when everything comes back together. 
So now let's start with the first and most important things. And uh, that, is, that is my belief, and everybody might have his own approach, but uh, my, my way is always, when the, when the shell comes in, one of the few first things you need to have ready is, is this one, this, this, uh, the wiper screen jets. You need these, the nozzles, because otherwise you cannot, you cannot reach those other, unless you, you break your hands. So this is one of the most important items to, to fit. And um, the same is with the, with, the, with the joint, with the connector here for the two, um, two hoses, which are getting to the, uh, to, the, um, to the nozzles. That is one of the first things you need to have ready. So that is one thing. Second item, make sure you have these and, uh, and cooling hoses. This is the set you need to install as one of the first items to start with. And this is the other one, which is, um, so it's, it's the, for the 4.2 you have f four of these and they're not always available. So make sure you have them ready. You also need to have these. So make sure you have, you have all these bits readily available when you, you when you come back you might end up i have that and you might have that so be aware uh you could i could get these but these were not available at the time i needed that so this time i ordered that in time so that is crucial to have to start with that is item number two item number three are these this is the fuel line from the from the trunk this needs to be installed before you install the irs so this goes in and you see you will not be able to get this all this you see how that is curved you will not be able to install this when the irs is in so that is very important and this is i got this newly plated and uh, that needs to be ready when the shell comes in and this is my my priority list what I have to install also very important these are of course is for the automatic these are the cooling houses the cooling lines pipes for the um, automatic gearbox that goes some people might have not seen that at all so that is the connection to the gearbox this is the connection to the automatic gearbox and these are special and I don't know if anybody is still making them so I cleaned these the original ones and got them newly plated and also you need to have these you need to have the um, the mountings plated so after the uh, the um, the windscreen nozzles the cooling pipes the fuel pipe and the cooling pipes which are the four most important things to install first they need to be ready when the shell comes in. Then, of course, you need to have the engine ready. Otherwise, that will take, can take months or even a year to get that all back. So we started with the engine and this, the cylinder head contemporarily to the, to the bodywork. And this is all redone now. And uh, we just painted that again to the original paint. And uh, the block is done. Um, I just got the new um, oil pump. Uh, in and uh, and this will be reassembled within the next couple of uh, days and then we have the engine and the uh, and the block back together ready to install and so make sure you have that all in reach then here i've been working on in the meantime and uh, this is my, my my workbench and you see here this is the steering rack and so this is overhauled and there's a new spring in here a new clip in here this is the upper steering rack and uh, the lower one is in the shelf already done make sure you have all bits and it's properly working i had um, this one was corroded as you might have seen on others so i replaced this and it's properly functioning now again i replaced the the bushes here the the plastic bushes so this is ready to install and i have all the um, the copper bits here so it is tested and, and working the steering rack you see this is all still disassembled i was just short of a pair of uh, of, of gaiters of bellows here but uh, all the parts are here ready to install they come in here 
and uh, I'm just waiting for the bellows, but that is then already done. That's the next unit, the steering unit done. Very important are these. This is, as you can see, this is the wiper rack. That needs to be fully tested and installed, and because this needs to be installed at the very beginning of the reassembly, otherwise, because this is something you need to mount from the inside, and it's very hard to reach later on. Then you see here the wiper motor, that is fully tested, rebuilt, completely rebuilt, and uh, so I'm confident this will be working when installed. But that is, these are things you, ha you can do easily in between. Another thing you make, have to make sure to have at your hands is this one, because this one has to be installed. This is the, uh, the insulation, the heat insulation between the exhaust and the body. And also these are not always available. So you make sure you order these well in advance because if you don't have this, you cannot install the exhaust. This is something I recommend you order well in advance. Make sure you have it instead of uh, finding yourself with, with, with stopping your project because one or two items are not there. In, another thing we, we found is this, is this is the automatic flywheel. And uh, you see the... Um, the plate is a flexible plate riveted to, to the wheel and uh, the plate very often on the E-type the plate is cracked and um, so we need to replace the flexible plate here and get it reconnected. Thing now we are in Germany and we don't have the imperial sizes. We need a 3 8 rivets to get back on here and uh, those we can only find in the States or um, in UK. Uh, we, it needs to be ordered and shipped, so that takes a month. But without the flexible plate on it, you, you, cannot, you cannot install the gearbox. And uh, hence, make sure you check your flywheel. Or here, a few other items, which are originals, and you need to get these... Um, revised otherwise it makes no sense but it might take some time and uh, so i'm recommending you having these things sorted well in advance and not at the moment you need them so make sure you have them also in your shelf when you have the car ready for installation so this is the um, the brake master cylinder for the four, for the 4.2 cars and this is um, rebuilt and ready to install and a harder thing is this one as you can see here is uh, fully rebuilt is an original unit and try to find one when you need one and uh, so th these are things you have to make sure you have to have them in your shelf uh, not only when you think you might need them make up your a plan of what you have to send out and get rebuilt Otherwise, it will unnecessarily delay your reassembly of the project and you will be surprised every single item takes so long these days. So it is my recommendation for you, make sure you have that all going on. Next thing I recommend you to have already done before you get the car back are the chrome bits. This is the rear bumper and the rear overrider and these are totally re-chromed or they all fit to the car and uh, and this is a 4.2 as you can see they have the cutout here but if you have a 3.8 the first thing you have to install are the rear bumpers because you cannot reach behind the fuel tank when that is in so the, uh, the rear bumpers are one of the first things you need to install on the on the 3.8 on the left hand side because otherwise there's no reach. Also, the overrider, sometimes you think they are, they, are, they are small and easy to find. They might be small, they might be easy to find, but you have to fit these to the bumper before you install the bumper. So make sure you have these. Then you can mount them to the rear bumpers or the front bumpers and only then you can put them on the car. 
I've been there, one was damaged or scratched, so I had to send one out again. That's why they are still covered in plastic. I don't want to get them scratched. And uh, I only take them out when I install them, but I know they do fit and they are totally new, perfectly re chromed as you can see. And uh, it will be a pleasure to, to start mounting these because that gives the shine of the car. We already started with interior and I show you a bit how we progress, but that is a long, longer, longer issue. But everything we could do prior or without the body shell, we are already doing. Then when the body shell comes in, we just put the things in like the, like the sill covers, the, um, the, the rear wheel art covers from the inside, the, the vinyl. That will be then installed, but all the rest we want to have done before. And as you can see, I will show you now a few bit. Then also what, what, what you can do or should do in between. I don't know if you're able to, but we do that all ourselves. We cover, we do all the interior ourselves. We buy the kit from BAS in UK. And a lot of things you have to do. So this is already done. That's a rear bench. And we have that. We covered the, the controls. We covered the, all the other rest. We have done these. And we glue them back in. As you can see, this is the, the radio console, this is the center console for the gear shifter. That is all, takes a huge amount of time. So if you start doing that and you underestimate the effort or the work, again, that will delay and you might have had the time. We got these instruments done and you see this one is, is now in, uh, for, the, for, the, for Germany, we need to have the 260 kilometers per hour. So this is all, as you can see, this has all been done. It is converted to the correct ratio. We will change the ratio from the 331 to we will install a 307, a lower ref and more silent running. So make sure you have the instruments done like this one. Uh, they will be installed and make sure you have all the bits there. This is this is the original ref counter. Make sure that is all tested. Make sure you have the setter. The, um, the clock setter, sometimes they are missing, don't know why. You might have sourced another, another instrument where this is missing. So make sure you have them all there. And then it's, uh, that's a ref counter that will be polished again. And um, then we are ready. Also not to forget and never underestimate the hardware. The hardware are things like these. You have to get these cleaned and uh, get them, get them uh, plated again. So these are, these are, are not, you will always find, especially when you restore a project, when you do a project, you will always find a few bits missing. You see there's one nut only, and I wonder where the other ones are. I have them, but not here. And then you have these already plated, and you need more than you think. And you see I'm, I'm loving original stuff. That's why I have cleaned them and got them replaced. I will all reuse them. So and then, of course, you need to have all these ready. These are my treasure boxes and, uh, and, and these are all my screws. And they, when you see them, they are, they're ready to go on. And um, so there's, there's plenty of stuff. They're all... Here's, these are all the S-rated, these are all the, um, the R-rated ones. Then we, there's more stuff in here. Don't want to watch. Ah, these are the other, the special bolts for the brakes. And uh, the, the bigger sizes. That is, you need to have them all ready. But I'll show you a few more things. So, when you have a look, these are all the original bolts and nuts. I get them done, but I then I choose the best I can find. These are the long skirt nuts. And they are ready to use, ready to go on the car. You have all the, the nuts and bolts, originals. And uh, we also have then we have the we have the shinny clamps. A whole bunch, they they already these are all counted and dedicated to, to, to the cars. And here are again, even more. 
these are all ready to go on washers i'm using you see these are the squared washers spring washers because you know these are squared you see the width is the same than the height and um, that is what Jaguar were using and very often you find the other washers which are like these these are not square these are rectangular you see this this width is 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 longer than the height where Jaguar use always squared squared washer squared is a profile and um, when you see that that is rectangular and that is squared so you have to have all these squared washers you need to have these uh, the special screws that is these are all ready to go on a car and you see here you find the the, um, the chrome nuts and everything is there and it requires a lot of work and dedication to these details but well that is what what makes a difference in the end of a enthusiastic passionate restoration or a business restoration of course you can only you, you don't make money on this as a business restoration you need to make a lot of shortcuts to get some profit in and um, well i'm not having any overhead costs it is just all my time and knowledge i'm investing and i hope you can take advantage of that and i hope your cars become as you want them so go ahead and uh, keep watching my videos